Hi, I'm Jeff Newman with Jeff Rand College, and uh, I've been teaching steel probably for about 30 years now. And what I'm going to show you here on this little course is how to really understand your guitar and how it really fits in with the music. And that's what we're talking about, tying everything together. And uh, a lot of people have learned a lot of licks over the years, and maybe you're a brand new student, and maybe you're just trying to learn a few licks. Just learning the phrases of the licks and not knowing where to put them is not a very good way to learn because music is with a band and the licks that you learn and the scales and the things that you learn have to be put in time and in a certain place. And uh, if you learn to play the lick or the phrase and you don't know where it goes in the music and you, you're not sure where the fill may be in with the singer, it won't do you much good, will it? So what we're after here is to learn a phrase, that's true, and you're going to be learning some scales, and we're going to be learning the difference between a major chord and a seventh chord. And we're going to make it pretty easy here. We're going to use basically just two pedals. So you could fold up your D lever and your F lever, and you could have a student model for that matter. The idea here is to learn the neck of the guitar, not necessarily how to use every pedal. It's not important that you use every pedal. It's what you do with what you've got. So we're starting with the basics and the roots and the foundations here. So we're going to use the A and the B pedal so you can think simple and just use those two and find out what they do. And we'll learn how the, uh, the uh, A and B pedal can make some really nice phrases and some licks that you can put in exactly the right spot. So we're going to be going in a lot of different directions here. We're going to learn the phrase that's true. And then we're going to learn the difference between major chords and sevenths. And we're going to learn phrases that fit those things. And we're going to really work on where they go in time with the music. So we're going to put every lick and every phrase in a musical track. So if you've got a... Uh, a cassette player, you want to have it there close, and if you can put it up on a good hi-fi set so you can make it sound like the band is right there with you, it'll be a lot easier to hear how this all feels and how it all fits together. The main thing is that we're going to build. We're going to use some little building blocks here. We have some main objectives we want to get into. We've got seven major objectives we're looking for here. We're not just trying to learn a bunch of licks here. This is going in a, a musical direction. First, you want to learn to play and hear everything we do in measures or in four beat intervals and you learn to feel these things we don't want to have to actually count them but by doing it the way we're going to be doing it here you're going to hear the four beat intervals and ultimately be able to hear it as eight beats and second we want to learn to play the phrases or licks that identify with either major chords or seventh chords because there are two different kind of phrases we have to work with and the phrases we're going to learn are exactly eight beats in time and they're going to fit in songs as fills or they're going to be the building blocks, literally, of everything you'll play from now on. So you want to learn that to uh, think the phrases either as major chord scales or they're going to be seventh chord scales. And we'll explain that in a little bit, but that's the main thing is we're looking for these little phrases to take up a certain amount of time, eight beats. Third, we want to learn to play these licks and phrases in an exact place in the, in the rhythm track. We don't want to just learn the phrase and just throw it out there any time behind the singer or any, any time we want to. There's a definite place we're going to learn where are the licks and the phrases that are our two measure phrases, exactly where they go and exactly how they'll go in every song. No matter what song you're, you're with, you'll be able to feel where it goes and why it goes there. Fourth, we want to learn to play the chords and then when do we play the phrases or the melody line. There's a time when we just don't play melody, particularly whenever the singer is in there, we want to learn when to lay out and when not to play. And it's hard to resist sometimes, and that's what we're learning. And then we're learning to play when that le the, uh, the uh, melody line actually fits and when the chord actually fits. Fifth, we want to learn to play the phrases that are the major scales and the seventh scales in exactly the right spot. The hardest thing we'll have to do is number six, and that's learning the phrase and then learning how to transpose it to any other chord we needed to. You're going to learn them all in G here, but they're not going to be much good to you. If you can't move them around, you've got to be able to play the same little G phrase as an A or as in a C or as in an E. And if it's a major chord, that's fine. And if it's a seventh chord, you'll have to learn to transpose it. And each time we'll have a root or a foundation place that you can run from or use as a spot to learn to transpose. But that's going to be one of our major jobs, learning to transpose that thing. Number seven, we want to learn to hear and feel every song we do, not necessarily just the ones we're doing on this course. You'll be able to take apart every song, no matter what you hear it on the radio or whether it's on a record, and you'll be able to see it in a chord chart or in a little picture of, of uh, two measures at a time. And that's the most important thing is getting the feel of it, not so you have to write it out, but you feel it and you hear the whole thing. 
in eight beat intervals so you can get your chords in the right places and you can get your actual phrases in the right places. So this is really up from the top. We're taking it from the very beginning. And there's a lot of players who've been around a long time that have been playing. They've got everything sort of out of sorts. They've got a lot of licks, but they don't know how to use them. They've got a lot of experience, but they don't know how it's really done in the professional way. So we're taking it up from the top, from the very beginning, and we're sort of regrouping everything you know. And if you're a new player, you're learning all the new things from the top. And there's only one way, and that's up. And we're from the top, and most songs is from the very start. So that's what we're doing. We're going to start at the very beginning and regroup and learn to play and think like a professional, truly up from the top. This is an actual chord chart of the G vamp or the way any song might look. In this case, the chords don't change at all. It's all just G. And this is a good way for us to practice any of our G phrases. But we're learning the two things here that are the most important thing, how to feel the four beats of each measure and where to put this phrase. So you see on the first two measures each time, and this is not something that we uh, actually want to write out every time. It's something we learn to feel. So that's what we're doing here. But looking at it helps you uh, keep track of what's going on. So what we've got here is we've got four beats here of G, another four beats, so that's two measures. And then we have another four beats of G and another four beats of G. So the actual phrase we want to play any time is going to be at the end of the line. So we'll always have the two measures at the front, and we'll count them, but we'll actually play the chord here and always on the first of each beat. The important thing is when you start the phrase. Learning the phrase is easy. That's, that's not so hard as getting at exactly the right spot. So the phrase is exactly eight beats long, and it'll fit right here. So we'll kind of keep track of time by playing the chord on the front, a two-string chord again, and any G will do. You can be on the third fret or up on 6A, or you could be uh, up on 10A and B, but you can start here, play a chord, and let it hold for these four beats. Play it again, play right on the first beat of there. Don't play on the second one because that kind of gets you uh, out of meter for some reason, and that's not the accepted behavior. So we're learning how to play behind the singer and exactly when the fill starts. Now, if you start the fill too late, you won't have enough time here. We want to start the fill or the phrase that we're learning. Any of the phrases, whether they might be a G phrase or a D seventh phrase, whatever we're going to be playing, They'll always start right there on that very first beat of that G, and it'll carry on for eight beats. And then we'll be back in the second line, and we'll be playing just the chords and the chords and then the phrase. So we're learning how to play behind the singer, when to stay out, when to get in. All right, let's listen along with the rhythm track, and let's count. Now, you don't actually have to write these out. You can learn to feel them, and that's what we're talking about doing here. Listen to the count, and then we'll go right from the start. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three. And we play our phrase right here. Here's where we'll play the chord. And the chord. And we play the phrase. Four beats on each one of these. The chord. The chord. The phrase starts. And it'll carry over through to here. Once again, the chord chord and the phrase will start right here we want to learn to feel it just the way and we repeat again chord we're playing four four rhythm here and we start the phrase and it carries through here we're back to playing a chord and a chord and the phrase starts and again and here's the chord again chord and a phrase and the chord and the chord and the phrase and it'll come to an end here because it just flies through so what you're hearing here is how the singer might be in and, and a lot of people have never seen a chord chart they don't realize that the singer will probably be playing each of these first two measures and your fill will always be over here. And that's what we're learning, how to play fills, how to play short little melodies. This is a, a good description of overall music, not just how to play around 
and just play anywhere. This is where it's supposed to go and exactly how long the phrase is supposed to be. As we go through this course, you're going to see some shots down on the pedals. And you'll notice that I'll be playing on pedals two and three. And that's maybe backwards to what you do. You maybe have your A and B pedal as the first and second ones. It really doesn't matter. I play the day setup, and you possibly play the same way. But you could have them reversed in what we call the M and setup or the, uh, the uh, other way around. There is no right. There is no wrong. There's about half and half. So as you see me pressing the, the uh, second and the third pedal, just think differently. If you've got uh, the reverse of that, just think the opposite. If you've got the day set up, it'll look exactly right. But pedal two and three on mine is the B and the A. So I've got CBA instead of the ABC. But don't let that scare you. It's all the same thing. We're going to be using the very first rhythm track, number one, the G vamp. So go ahead and cue that up, and the first primary phrases are going to be about just the G major scale and the G major chords. Now, we don't want to play in the wrong place. We're going to learn to play the phrase in the right place, and we're going to learn the phrase uh, as a phrase that fits a two-measure interval. So we're going to be playing the G chord. Let's talk about the kind of chord we want to play when we're playing along with the rhythm track. Even though it doesn't change chords, we do want to play in the right places because it might change chords and we'll get the feel of it. The idea is this. If we play a G down on the third fret, Obviously, that's G with no pedals. So instead of playing the normal thing everybody thinks of as strings three, four, and five, just play strings three and five. It's simpler. It's a lot better. It's how you play it, not so much what you play. You get a nice vibrato on the note. Maybe strings three and four would be all right. Maybe strings four and five. But four and five sounds kind of odd because that's a perfect fifth, isn't it? So we'll leave that out for right now with the pedals up and play strings four and six. So we might play a chord that's the third and fifth string. No pedals here. And four and six. Maybe five and six. Or instead of five, six, and eight, we'll play strings five and eight. And instead of the strings six, eight, and ten, we'll play just maybe six and eight. Or just six and ten. So the idea is to play a nice simple chord that sings, and we're going to play it every four beats. So it'd be like one, two, three, four, pick, two, three, four, and again. And we're going to change the uh, interval of the note. We don't want to play the same chord, exactly the same one every time, because it, it can have a different voice. So we might play strings three and five for four beats, and then strings four and six for four beats. Then maybe strings five and eight. Whatever choice we have there. We also have a G that's with the pedals down up on 10. Most people know that. So with both pedals down on the 10th fret, you might play strings three and five. Three and four sounds kind of odd. That's that perfect fifth or the, the first tone in the scale and the fifth tone in the scale. Sounds kind of awkward. Really not so much with, along with the band, but it does by itself. So kind of avoid it for right now. So strings three and five. Or maybe strings four and five. That's a nice one. And maybe just squeezing the A pedal in there still can make a pretty nice chord. Instead of strings uh, 4, 5, and 6, maybe 4 and 5 or 5 and 6. Or strings 5 and 8. Or instead of 6, 8, and 10, kind of a heavy chord there, play strings 6 and 10. So we have a lot of choices of chords that we can play as the, uh, the little bed of chords or the pads that we put back here. So you can play uh, four beats of maybe the third and fifth string, maybe four and five, or maybe five and six, or five and eight, or six and ten. And then there's an odd little spot. And we're talking about just basic chords here. These are not phrases at all. They're just chords that we want to play, supposing there was a singer in there. We also have an intermediate spot between the third fret and the tenth fret with the pedals down. And just using the A and B pedals, we can still play an awkward sort of a G. Uh, it's that perfect fifth again, but we've, we've been doing it for years, and it's a, a nice effect. Just the A pedal only on the sixth fret with the third and the fifth string. This sounds kind of odd, but that is two notes out of a G chord. If we were using the F lever here on the fourth string, you'd hear it a little better, but we're not doing that. We're concentrating on either the no pedal positions or the A and B pedals. We're not using any knees, are we? So we can still play a G position that's on six with the A pedal, but you have to be careful what strings you play now. String, strings three and five. 
You can hear if you play a, a G on three. Slide up to the sixth fret with the A pedal. That's a beautiful G chord, even though it sounds kind of odd right now without the rhythm. As the rhythm is added into this, it'll sound a lot better. And the same exact notes are inverted on strings five and six. So you could play a G on the fifth and sixth strings. So you might be down on three, for instance, with no pedal. You can come up to 6A and strings five and six again. And then maybe on up to 10A and B. We're building positions here that are all G positions. So we have a pretty good choice here. You have the no pedal position on three. You have the 6A position, but you've got to be careful there about what strings you play, don't you? Or 10A and B with the pedals down. Or maybe the octave, way up on 15 there with no pedal. So those are the chords or the pads we want to play. And we want to play two measures of just the chord of the pad. This is setting us up for a later thing where we're going to use the phrases in with singers. And we're going to be using it as fills in there. And we'll always play the, the pad behind the singer like this. Now, look up primary phrase number one there. And here's what it sounds like. It's on the 10th fret. We're going to use that G that's on the 10th fret with both pedals down as the uh, root position for this phrase. Now, it looks funny. We are on the 10th fret with both pedals down, but you only see the 10A. Well, that's all right. Push both pedals down anyway. We're just going to play strings four and five, and all you see is the A pedal. Don't let that bother you. It's both pedals down. Uh, just get it, everything slammed either up or down here. So it starts off with the fourth and fifth string, and you slide up to 12 and just pick both pedals up. Just pick your foot up and make a nice slide. Get that coordination going there where you slide from 10 to 12 and let the pedals off. And then back to 10 with both pedals down again and let both pedals off. So it's... And then down to the fifth and sixth strings with both pedals down. Now there's two ways you can play that last note. You can just slam them down like it shows there. But that's a little without feeling. So kind of leave the B pedal in and squeeze the A pedal. So here's primary fill or phrase number one. One, two, three, four. Three, four. Now I'm going to be using my thumb and the second finger for most of these two note uh, intervals. Rarely will I use my first and second finger. I'll use the thumb and the second finger because it sounds better and you, you get a better right hand technique. In each one of these notes, I won't say this much anymore, but the uh, phrase or the fill, uh, the lick that we're playing here, can be played a lot of ways depending upon your technique. The fill or the phrase is beautiful if you use good technique, and it'll be very raw and rough if you use bad technique. Each note here, you want to have a good vibrato in. Notice if I play it dead. It's very dead sounding, so it needs life put in it. So. Just because the uh, note comes quick doesn't mean you're excused from playing vibrato there. So as you play, hit the first note, you got to get vibrato on that first note. When you come up to that 12, vibrato. Back to the next note. A lot of players don't realize that the vibrato is most necessary to be in tune, and it's necessary to make this thing sing. That's the only thing that gives this thing its soul or its life. So you can learn a lot of technique just in this one little phrase, this little fill, that carries over and into all of the other phrases because nothing's going to change here about that. The vibrato has to be on every note. And when you forget it, you're going to lose the feel and the, uh, the meaning of all of these phrases. So here's that first phrase. Let's do it along with the first rhythm track. Remember, we're going to play two measures of just the, the vamp, and we're just going to play two measures of chords. So we're going to play the first two measures and just hold it for a beat. And then maybe a different form of the chord. And then we're going to play the phrase. Because this is a behavior, and this is the science of working behind a singer and learning exactly where to put fills and how long they are. One, two, three, four.
G chord. And now the phrase. Another chord. And now the phrase. Chord again. Chord. Phrase. a little ending thing out of that thing. Just play the end of the, uh, the phrase and then play a chord on the end there. The main thing is this. You want to learn to hear that phrase. You want to learn to play the phrase. You learn two things here. You learn what the notes are in the scale and how you can basically just stay around that chord and play a phrase. This is not the way it's always going to be, but things get more complicated. But that's not the main issue here. The main issue is how does this little phrase sound and can you hum it to yourself before you play it? The most important thing you'll learn to do is to recall these phrases. We've got more than one phrase. We've got a lot of them here. And the important thing about learning them is how do they sound so that you can recall them and hum them to yourself before you play them. There's no way you can play a phrase if you don't hear it ahead of time. So what we're learning is the natural notes that it takes, but we're also learning the melody of the phrase itself and how we can fit it into a tune. It's no good to be a to be able to play the phrase but not hear it. You want to be able to hum it long before you ever let it out of the guitar or the phrase won't sound right. So keep that in mind. We'll go on to phrase number two. This phrase is based off of the uh, third fret G. The uh, primary phrase number one obviously was G with the pedals down. This is G in the no pedal position and it shows you the basic positions of the uh, little scale that you can find on the third fret. It starts just exactly like the phrase is. There's the third and fourth string on three, out to the first and second string, and then down to strings four and five, and you can have both pedals down there. Even though it doesn't show both, go ahead and have both A and B pedals down. It makes it easy because the very next note is five and six with both pedals down. And then both pedals off for the fifth and sixth string on the third fret. So here's the phrase. And you can squeeze into that A pedal there if it feels good. Pretty good sound if you squeeze in there. So here's in time. It goes three, four, two, three, four. There again, look at the vibrato on every note. That's what makes it sing is the fact that the vibrato's in there. And follow the bar as you go to the outside note, shoot the bar to the outside note, and then as you come to the lower notes, bring the bar on back. In other words, you draw the notes with the tip of the bar. Out, down, down some more. It helps you with the vibrato, it helps you with seeing what the note is, and it helps you draw exactly what's going on. So here we go, let's play uh, the primary phrase number two along with the G chord vamp number one. Again, we want to play the chords on the front because this again is the behavior and the science of learning to stay out away from the singer. In a little bit we won't be playing at all in these chord vamp positions so we're learning how it feels to get out of the way, that's all. With track number one, one chords first, two, three, a G four. chord, another one, now the phrase. chord, another chord, and the phrase, a different chord, a G, another one, and the phrase, chord. Maybe an octave higher, 
fifth inning. The phrase way up there. Sing the phrase to yourself. And the phrase. same way you might end any of them. With the pedals down is better than with the pedals up. One, two, three, four. before you go too far along. You remember you learned the first phrase and we've learned the second one. Go back with this rhythm track and see if you can play one phrase and then the other words. In other words, learn to play phrase number one, one time, and then think phrase number two, and then back and forth. Ultimately, what we're trying to do is build where we can play several different phrases and recall several different phrases because we don't want to repeat ourselves too many times. So the idea is the phrases sound different and they have a different melody. And recall is the hardest part. Remember where the, the notes are is not all that hard, but the way the phrase sounds can sometimes su uh, surprise you. All right, let's try number three. This phrase involves two different chord positions as the foundation of the bass. Obviously, up on 15, we have a G with the no pedals, and then down on 10 with both pedals down, we have another G. This phrase kind of builds the scale notes between those two. It's a very simple idea. We're not going to use any passing tones between them yet. But up on 15 there, the first two notes is, are kind of quick. We're hitting the, the uh, fourth and fifth string with no pedals first, but then squeezing and then letting it off. So it's that fast. Just the A and B pedal both down if you want to. You don't need to slant your foot to get just the A pedal. Just get the, the uh, both pedals up or down. And then quickly, both pedals down on 15 A and B with the fifth and sixth string. Notice they're, they're one or quarter note apiece. And then the very last note is down on 10, which that's where we tie in that other G, squeezing in A and B pedal. So the whole phrase is, or in time. This could be phrased several ways, so you can sort of interpret this the way you feel it. One, two, three, four. Or squeezing slow. Two, three, four. 
or you might even pick the first two notes, squeezing in. If you want to rather than all just one squeeze, squeeze and pick it in, pick it again, and let it off. Again, we want to play this along with the G vamp on the on the very first track there. Again, we want to play chords first for two measures, and then play this fill right behind it. So here we go, along with G vamp number one. One, two, three, four. Chord. Again, a chord. Now the phrase. Chord. Another chord. Quickly. 15 down to 10 is fast. Here we go and go. Another chord, 6A. 3. Another phrase. Vibrato, each note. The phrase. Pretty good little phrase there. It's a quick move from 15 down to 10 pedals, but that's what we're learning here. How to coordinate yourself and find out where the scales are, and you have to move that bar. Again, vibrato every note or it won't sing. Three, four. One, two, three, four. This phrase again is much the same as number three was in that it uses the uh, G chord on 15 with no pedals and then it ends up down on 10 with both pedals down. Again, it takes some of the same uh, scale notes we used back in number two and it ties them together. No, uh, no difference really in the way it's phrased. It's basically the same phrase, just looking at it in a different way. Looking at number four there, it starts way up on 15 strings, three and four, out to the first and second string. Again, both pedals down right there will be fine, A and B pedals on strings four and five. And then quickly down on 10, squeezing both pedals in. So here's number four phrase. Or a long squeeze on the end. It's one, two, three, four. Quick move from 15 to 10. Here we go. Let's do this along with the, with the uh, G vamp number one. Again, chords every time on the front and then the phrase on the ends of the line. One, two, three, four.
notice the vibrato can never leave. Even that long jump, even though they're quick, you still have to do the vibrato in there. So concentrate on the vibrato and being slow with it and a uh, uh, pretty, pretty wide one in there. When you put it in with the actual rhythm track, a very narrow vibrato will disappear, won't it? So you need to lengthen it out, make it very slow, or it gets canceled out by all the overtones that the band causes. Now, here's what we want to do. We want to take all four of these little phrases and try to recall them. We're going to take them one at a time and uh, put them in one every other measure or one every other line. We want to recall all four of them. So we'll start with the phrase number one and then phrase number two, phrase number three, and number four. So you have to recall all of the, uh, the different ones, and that's the hard part, isn't it? Trying to remember how each one goes. You might want to stop right here and go back and look at, at each one of these things and recall what they sound like because we're going to cram them all into one rhythm track. All right, this is a fun game here because we take all four of the primary phrases and we're going to have to recall them in, in order. Uh, not necessarily, it wouldn't have to be exactly in order, but why not? We want to recall them anyway. So we're going to take one, two, three, and four in that order and we'll take the G vamp, the very first one. Now, we want to play a chord. You get a choice. You can play the chords off of three, off of six A, or the chord uh, pads off of 10 with the pedals down or up on 15, depending, and maybe a, a different one each time because, because you want to get to a spot each time that you can play the next phrase. So we might start with the, uh, the, the chords on 10 with the pedals down first because primary phrase number one is there on the, uh, on the 10th fret with the pedals down. So we might play the chord, and then the first phrase. Now, primary phrase number two is down on the third fret, so why not jump down there and play the chords? Two measures of chords every time. And now, primary phrase number two. Now, we've got to get all the way up to 15 for primary phrase number three, so we might play a chord right there on three. Jump all the way to 10 with pedals, go halfway and play a chord. Now, way on up to 15 and play the primary phrase number three. Now, we've got to get back up to 15, so you might stay right there on 10 with the pedals down and play the chord for the first time. Maybe the second one, way up on 15. It's up to you how you want to do it, but the main thing is to get there. You've got to do this anytime you play behind a singer. So you're learning several things in this little exercise. We're learning to recall basically the four major, major phrases, but we're learning to navigate left and right too and think, where are the G's that I can get to to make the chords and the pads, but where do they leave me so I can play that phrase that I want to? So we're all the way up on 15 and here's phrase number four. So let's cue up the first track. Remember we want uh, the phrases right in order and we'll play the pads each time and uh, make sure we don't needle around too much. Play the chords and the pads, just two string chords, and uh, just let them lay there for four beats. Here we go with rhythm track number one. Two, three, four. We're going to number two. That's a pretty good workout right there, isn't it? Because you have to think where the chord's going to be, and you have to think what the phrase is going to sound like, and get there at the same time. There's a lot of players that don't realize that the, uh, the logistics and, this, and the, the travel between the frets and getting there takes some forethought, and you have to recall the phrase and plan your attack at the same time. 
which is probably why there's a, have a, there's a lot of players that have trouble playing one phrase and then another because they've never learned to think ahead and play a different phrase. They end up playing the same one and they run dry. So it's a matter of learning to think and learning to plan your attack. And that's what this is about. Try this and see how you do. This tune obviously has a singer on it and we want to look at it. This is the 12 bar blues format, by the way. That's why they call it a blues. Uh, regular country songs have uh, four lines of four measures and blues have 12 bars like this. So this is a kind of an unusual format for a country tune to, to say the least. But anyway, the, we want to play some fills to this thing. And notice the last of each line is all in G. So that makes this song an easy song to practice our just our G major phrases. So it starts right off and it has an introduction and it'll be the last line. So it'll come right in and we'll play uh, we could e play a D seventh chord or a D major chord of any kind we want to and then play a phrase on the end there. And it, once you learn a few D seventh phrases, you could play a D seventh phrase right there and then a G major phrase right there. So you could actually create an intro for this tune by just playing that right there. And we'll do that here in a minute. I'll just play a couple of phrases. Then we'll come in and uh, Ernie Rao will be doing the singing here. So he'll be right here on this measure and on this measure. And then you'll hear that this measure is left open for you. And then Ernie will be back in singing and he'll be playing here and here and you'll pick it up right on the first beat. We can't stress the importance enough of starting this phrase right on the first beat. You can't wait till he's through singing because you won't have enough time. And it's the accept, accepted behavior, by the way. Uh, this is sort of like a relay. You don't want to wait till he's completely gone and then play the fill. In the same respect, you'll still be playing uh, on the end of this fill when he comes back in with his line. So he picks up where you left off and you pick up where he left off. So the thing is, he'll have these lines, you'll have these fills, and it's convenient in this song. It's a great tune to practice your scales to because they're all G. You don't have to think G's, C's, or D's. You don't have to transpose any of the licks we've been doing. Any phrase that we've learned, one through 10, will fit in these holes. So here we go. Let's listen to the track. Listen to how it goes. This is the intro. And the last line, here comes Ernie. We're out. Play the chord. Stay away from me. Here's our lick. We're back to chords. Blues. Why don't you set Here's our lick. Don't here's our chords. You keep on and here's our phrase. And we repeat. We're back to chords. We play our lick. Back to chords. Right on the first of each bar. Play. Right on the first beat. Chord. Play the lick right there. And it carries through. And we repeat. Chord. And we play now. Carry it through. And we're back to chords. Why don't you say play now. We're back to chords. And we play now. Getting it in the right spot's the most important thing. Go. Chord. Play now. The ten phrases and the phrase and the chord now and the phrase go back to the top. Phrase. Go. go and the chord you keep on and the phrase always on the first beat Don't know back to the last line you keep on that was a tag me. and the phrase and we take it out every tune we do can be seen in our minds this way we don't necessarily have to write out every song like this, but you could. 
it'll either be four lines like this or three lines like this. Blues will look three bars, three measures, or three lines. It'll be 12 bars, and regular country tunes will be 16 measures or four lines of four. But we'll play many, many times, 90% of the time, you can get by with playing the phrase in this spot. So this is a great tune to practice with. Let's go at it. If you haven't already queued up the track number six there, the blues stay away, go ahead and do that. This is a great old tune and we put it in a 4-4 timing. I like this tune because it puts all the fills in the chord of G. And yes, that's true, it goes from the one to the four or from a G to a C. But they're just the chords. All the fills at the end of the lines are all in a G chord. So you can take any one of these phrases or all four of them and any one will go in there as the fill. And that makes this thing fun because it makes it practical and it makes it reality, doesn't it? So you need to remember how the phrase goes. And if you're not very good at the phrase up to now, you need to go back and practice because this is the place to put it in. But why not just practice it along with this track? This is what makes it fun too. First of all, let's study how this song actually goes. And you could actually write a chart out, uh, but that's not reality either. You don't actually play with charts. And if you were in the studio, you might. But when you're on the bandstand or when you're playing with a group, probably you won't get a chart. So you're going to have to remember how this thing sounds and feels. So the intro to this song is uh, 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 two measures of the five chord, or the D. So we're just going to play a couple of measures of D. Even though it's in the key of G, it starts right off in a D. So we'll just play a couple of chords, four beats at a time, maybe up on ten or maybe down on five with the pedals down, because that's our D. And then we can actually play any one of these fills at the end uh, of that uh, introduction. Just play a couple of measures of D and then maybe play number one. And then you'll hear Ernie Rowell coming in singing. He'll be singing blue, stay away from me. So we're actually going to play the chords right there, two measures of G. And then you'll get the, the, uh, the fill, which could be number one, number two, or number three. But let's put them, let's just use number one for a minute. And then on the end of your fill, the song goes to a C chord or a four. So while you're holding that chord off of the end of that phrase, go ahead and drop into a C, maybe from 10 back to A, and just hold the chord, and another C, there'll be two measures of C there, and then Ernie will run out of wind and words and everything all at the same time, and you get the fill right there. And then on the end of your fill, it goes to a five chord, so just let it resolve. Just let the pedals off right there on 10, and you'll have the D chord, and Ernie will be back in singing, and you'll play two measures of the D. And then again, he'll run out of wind and, and air and, and words, and you get the same fill. So you can play the uh, blues, stay away from me, all with exactly the same fill, number one. What you have to do is be a Dr. Jek and J Jekyll and Mr. Hyde here in that you have to be a chord player behind the singer and not noodle around. Now, that's half of doing this is learning how to behave yourself. No fair noodling around just because it feels good to noodle around. He's got the words there and you don't want to interfere with that. So, when he's playing and he's singing, you behave yourself. Just play the chord, four beats, just like we've been doing it up to now. Either that or don't play anything. Some of you who are better players don't need to play the chord behind it to stay up with the chord. Some of you who are just getting started, go ahead and play the chord. The best way would be not play anything, just play the fill. So, let's look at the song and listen to how it goes, and I'll show you. We'll just use the, uh, the fill number one, the primary phrase number one. It gets better, of course, with more complicated ones, but this is getting you the idea of how it feels and how it sounds. Here we go. Remember, it starts with a D chord on the front. One, two, three, four. D chord. One, two. Here we go. And another one. And the fill. A G chord. Another one. Stay away Fill. Fill. The Don't D chord. know why. Another D. You keep on and the fill. A G chord. Love Again. Fill. To a C. True love C. was never meant fill. for me. Number two. 
record right there. Let's see. Why don't you say it? Phil. Don't know why you keep on bothering Phil. me. Don't know why you keep on bothering me. Number three. Way up there. practicing in this too because you can keep all your fills in exactly the same thing. In normal tunes, however, things are going to change. You might have to play this fill as when it goes to the four chord or the C or to the five chord when it goes to the D. This tune, it just so happens that all the fills come out to be in one chord. You still have to go to the four chord and the five or the C and the D whenever the, the uh, singer goes there, but all you're playing is the chords there. So you can just leave those chords out if you wanted to and just play the fills. Let's do this song one more time here now. And let's change in all the different uh, phrases, one, two, three, and four, as different fills. <laughs> 